हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम तरुण कुमार वशिष्ठ आई एम असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी बिजनेस स्कूल पंजाब यूनिवर्सिटी रीजनल सेंटर लुधियाना टुडे वी आर हियर टू डिस्कस वन ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स एंड दैट इज मॉड्यूल नंबर ट्वेंटी सेवन एथिक्स सोशल रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी एंड स्ट्रेटेजिक मैनेजमेंट विच इज देयर अंडर द पेपर स्ट्रेटेजिक मैनेजमेंट under the subject management students after listening to my talk and going through the corresponding e text you should be able to understand the concept of ethics ethical and non ethical behaviors and ethical dilemmas role of ethics in strategic management then types of unethical behavior being perpetrated by employees and other stakeholders in organizations the underlying reason of perpetrating these unethical behaviors then we would ensure with a framework that the people perform ethical behaviors in the organizations then we would go for corporate social responsibility and its strategic role in the success and the failure of organizations and social policy so students before we introduce the topic of ethics let's start with a very important quote given by c max killen a famous lawyer and he said that the business is not based on ethical grounds they are not beneficial to the society and like other unethical combinations they pass into oblivion now if we listen to this particular quote we would see that the role of ethics is very very important for the success and the failure of an organization but before we go for the role let's try to understand what ethics really are now ethics seems to be just a topic but then it is a major discipline in philosophy like politics like like epistemology metaphysics and all and it shapes the behavior of individuals and the whole societies so ethics are actually the generally accepted principles that decides what is right and what is wrong and govern the behavior of a person or the group or a society or maybe the professional members of a particular organizations now the behaviors conforming these generally accepted principles would be known as ethical behaviors and those violating these generally accepted principles would be termed as unethical behaviors now it seems very easy students that we should be able to find out what ethical is and what unethical is but you know there are n number of variables in this complex world and many a times it's very very difficult to find out whether this particular decisions will be counted as ethical or unethical and we call these situations as ethical dilemmas like i give you one example if there is a company say a tobacco company and we say whether it should be operating then some people say no you know smoking is actually injurious to health and these companies should not be operating but then there could be some counter argument saying that see whenever we see a package of a cigarette then it is written very very clearly that it is injurious to health plus it is not sold around the universities and schools plus it is not permitted to smoke in public areas so it is a human right after that even if somebody wants to smoke he should be able to smoke so it is not that much easy many a times to understand whether a particular behavior is ethical or not and the final decision of a company or maybe the top brass of the company would decide the future of the company but on the other hand there are some other principles which are so much accepted that we convert these principles into laws and if a company violates these laws that won't just be counted as unethical but also will be counted as illegal let's now talk about the role of ethics in the organizations one of the basic difference between ordinary and extraordinary companies is that the later one follows ethical policies beyond what is legally required you must have heard of good car companies recalling their defective cars suomoto 
or the pharmaceutical companies recalling their medicines because of some substandard chemicals being used therein. One such case is that of Johnson & Johnson, wherein it called its defective medicine from the market and went further to add against using it. The company incurred a heavy loss, but it helped it in its brand building eventually because of its superior responsiveness. One such case is that of Nike, wherein the operations seemed unethical though Nike had not contravened any statute in the US. It outsourced the production of shoes to third world countries and the working conditions in some of these countries were substandards to say the least in comparison to that in the developed world. Nike had to bear the burnt in form of retaliation from many international agencies and subsequent fall in its reputation for a considerable time period. Due to the presence of umpteen controllable and uncontrollable variables facing an organization, there are zillions of ethical dilemmas for an organization in daily life. Most of these ethical dilemmas faced by the manager are due to the potential conflicts between the individual goals of the manager, the organization and the goals and fundamental rights of the stakeholders that is stockholders, customers, suppliers, employees, government and society at large. Stakeholders have basic rights that should be respected and it is unethical to violate those rights. Stakeholders have the right to accurate and timely information in terms of accounting statements following the requisite standards about their investments. Customers have the right to be fully informed about the products and services they consume. Employees have the right to safe and conducive working conditions, fair rewards for the work they perform, and to be treated with dignity by the organization. Suppliers have the right to expect contracts to be respected and competitors have the right to expect that organization will abide by the rules of the competition and will not violate the provisions of Competition Act and rules related thereto. Communities and the general public, including government, have the right to expect that an organization will not harm the environment, will develop self-renewable systems so that the natural resources are not overly exhausted and will help develop the society by providing opportunities of the sustainable development. In case we apply common sense to the realm of business, it won't take rocket science to conclude that organization must take the stakeholders view into consideration while deciding for the organization. Considerations for the stakeholders will eventually lead to their support in the survival and long-term development of the organization in this world of cutthroat competition. Tata Motors, when shifted their plant from Singur, West Bengal to Sanand, Gujarat, they trained the people of nearby village technically, conducted yoga classes and ultimately transformed them into productive human resources. It helped Tata Motors to boost their reputation and helped the general public at large by generating employment opportunities. Others go beyond this instrumental approach to ethics to argue that in many cases acting ethically is simply the right thing to do. They argue that businesses need to give something back to the society that made their success possible. Types of unethical behaviors Oftentimes, unethical behavior occurs due to agency problem. More specifically, when the manager puts her interest or that of the organization above the goals or the fundamental rights of one or more stakeholders. Let us have a look 
at some of unethical behaviors arising out of such circumstances. The very first can be self-dealing. It occurs when the managers find a way to feather their own nests with corporate monies through misusing the resources of the organization for their personal use beyond what is legal. Information manipulation. It occurs when a manager uses their control and authority to hide or distort the information to gain financially. The classic case of Satyam Computers is a paragon in this regard, wherein Ramalinga Raju manipulated the financials of the company to get more funds for the company and to boost the morale of the stakeholders of the company. Eventually, the superstitious dealings were divulged to the world when it became impossible for him to carry it on any further. Many a times, information being manipulated is non-financial too. One example could be when a pharmaceutical company suppresses its internal research wherein it observes long-term not life-threatening side effects of one of its best-selling drugs. Anti-competitive behavior. It covers a range of actions that exploits the current and potential competitors. One of such action is to show monopolistic behavior by selling goods at such a low price that all other smaller competitors are ruined with the passage of time. The similar behavior at macro level wherein the nations are involved is known as anti-dumping. Other such action is opportunistic exploitation. A large company exploits the suppliers or intermediate customers in the value chain by forcing an unequitable contract having odds in the favor of the company. The power to breach a contract or redefining the terms of contract midway comes from the bargaining power lying with the company due to its large size and dynamics of the industry. Yet another action in this category is to form a collision by two three largest organizations in a particular industry when these companies decide the price of a product by illegally controlling the supply of the product or otherwise. It leaves no choice with the customers but to buy the product at an artificially higher prices. The next one is substandard working conditions. Substandard working conditions arise when the organization pays less than the legally set standards or underinvests in the working conditions. Aforementioned Nike case falls in the same category. In India, state government proposes minimum wages time to time, and all the firms in the organized sector are legally bound to pay more than this level of wages. Labor laws like Factories Act 1948, Contract Labor Act 1970, Workmen Compensation Act 1923, etc., help provide conducive working milieu for the employees. Environmental degradation. Environmental degradation occurs when the products, services or direct or indirect actions of an organization harms environment anyway. Air pollution, water pollution and soil pollution due to inappropriate dumping of harmful chemicals, sound pollution and heat waves due to furnace and heavy machines and deforestation resulting in soil erosion and environmental imbalance are some types of the environmental degradations. Recently observed debacles like global warming and nuclear leakages have made the government to focus on environmental friendly policies. All the big manufacturing units were ordered to base outside Delhi due to the increasing level of pollution in the capital of India. Organizations are expected to treat the water and fumes before leasing them to the atmosphere. Certifications like ISO 14001 
are getting popular day by day to acknowledge and encourage environment friendly and sustainable practices corruption corruption as an unethical action seems self explanatory corruption can be perpetrated in zillions of the ways managers pay bribes manipulate financial statements do money laundering misappropriate funds etc subrato rai aka sahara shri has been put behind the bars for misappropriating the money of the investors into undisclosed activities ramalinga raju's case already discussed above can also be put into the category of the corruption students now let us discuss the underlying reasons of people behaving unethically in the organizations one of the major reasons is the different culture see the employees in an organization belong to diverse cultures and this results in different value systems now i would take a moment to tell you what value systems are now there could be one person which would say that i would be uttermost honest maybe i won't be able to do the work but i will remain honest in whatever i do there would be some other person he would say that it is my duty to complete my work i may be a bit dishonest but i would do it for my company now which of the person is right maybe both of the persons are right but their hierarchical arrangements of values are different so many a times when a person comes from a different culture has different value system then what is required in that particular company and when he decides something it is taken as unethical the other reason could be that people actually consider economic results when they decide something and in this process they forget about the philosophical side of the decisions and the decisions are often counted as unethical now third point could be that as we said that organizations remains operating in a very diverse or very complex background having diverse stakeholders like suppliers customers the government employees the society at large in which the organization is operating into many a times it becomes impossible for a person to weigh different sides of the uh, decision from the perspective of different or diverse stakeholders and in the end it leads to confusion fourth reason and final reason we are discussing in this module is that many a times a person justifies his or her acts and justifies it in a way that he says okay what i am doing is maybe unethical but then the final result will be very much ethical so whatever i am doing is doing for higher purposes so it is again a question whether we can uh, say it or not but this is a kind of justification students uh, i would like to recommend a novel that is animal farm by george orwell it is one of the best novels of the century and it would tell you how people behave unethically and how people different other people in the organization bear it up to the great extent and we have seen it in the case of russia and other communist countries now it is the time to discuss the framework framework to ensure ethical behaviors in the organizations how can i ensure as an organization that my be um, my my employees will be behaving ethically one of the way is that i take the people on board who are higher on their ethical standards now it can be done by having superior acquisition policies whenever i acquire my employees whenever whenever i go for the recruitment the processes should be such that whatever person i am hiring should be high on ethical standards how to do that one way could be to administer standardized scales or you sh you should say questionnaires on 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 them and find out their ethical orientations two main variables which we count are person organization fit and person job fit these two behaviors result in getting on board a person who is actually having the similar kind of value systems 
he is motivated and competent enough to do the job and there are least discrepancies when whenever he is performing his job now one more way to ensure good people in the organization is to have referral programs because when a new employee is referred by a person who is actually working in the organization the person knows the new employee very well and he knows the organization very well so there will be a better fitment of people or new recruits in the organization the same objective may also be achieved with the help of reference checks because when we ask the previous employers of a person how he was behaving in the organization and maybe if we check his credentials maybe uh, police verification and all then even with this particular uh, way we can ensure that the person will be uh, an appropriate person in our organization the next is promotions value systems must be given due importance in promotion decisions and only those people must become the top brass of the organization who qualify on the adherence of essential ethical values code of conduct every organization must have a code of conduct to guide the employees on how to decide to be ethical standing orders provided for the work command based upon industrial employment act 1946 provides an example in this regard now students whenever it comes to a code of conduct the best code of conduct i have ever encountered is the document our credo it belongs to one of the most admired companies in the world and that is johnson and johnson i am sure you all must be familiar with the products like bandaids and other such products belonging to that this particular company now if you go through this document or credo you would find that the organization johnson and johnson it takes care up to the maximum about all the diverse stakeholders of the organizations like mothers and fathers of the patients maybe the children maybe the nurses and the doctors and the society at large this particular credo what it does is that it prioritizes the actions of the organizations and whatever implementation of plan is whatever strategies are made by the organization they are strictly based on our credo now what is credo credo is the document you are believing in like your credentials and it really sticks to the credo so i would urge you people to please go through it as many times as you can because it is really really very interesting decision making processes beside the culture that favors and encourages ethical behaviors an organization must have practical and executable guiding principles to direct an employee to be sure that her decisions made by them are always ethical to ensure that they must be able to systematically analyze the implications of the decision made by them some experts have designed some questions and the answers of these questions in yes ensures that the decisions made are ethical these are the questions like number 1 does my decision fall within the accepted values or standards that typically apply in the organizational environment number 2 am i willing to see the decision communicated to all the stakeholders affected by it for example by having it reported in newspaper or on television three would the people with whom i have a significant personal relationship such as family members friends or even managers in the other businesses approve of the decision ethics officers having ethics officers is one of the important ways to ensure that the organization adheres to the ethical standards through sound code of conduct ethical officers are qualified and competent to discern ethical actions from the unethical ones in many companies ethics officers also acts as internal ombudsperson who deals 
with the complaints and suggests changes in the processes and systems so that the organization behaves ethically to employees adhere to the code of conduct strong corporate governance strong corporate governance practices like sure that the employees adhere to ethical norms practices like having outside independent directors are most important to ensure that managers don't make decisions to cut their own ex or to have ulterior motives had the companies like satyam computers and aron and worldcom had the independent directors the companies would not have fallen for unwanted fatal practices and their managers would not have used the resources of the company as their own money moreover following benchmarks for reporting financial results helps a long way assertive training assertive training popularly known as at in corporate world is very important to instill the employees with the courage to say no in the pressure situations it is a common fact that employees when pressurized by the authorities strike a compromise on their ethical standards group think and group shifts are common occurrences in the organization to install proper systems to encourage people to divulge the malpractices of the company is an effective way therefore whistle blowing procedures must be instituted in every organization last but not the least it must be understood that behaving ethically is not only a virtue but also a mantra for immaculate reputation and long term success of any organization friends next we will discuss a very important issue for organizations and i said very important because these days it is a buzzword that is social responsibility and its strategic role in the organizations now csr or corporate social responsibility are the activities which are voluntarily done by an organization for the good of the society many a times the society they do voluntarily belong to their area or somehow related to their area and many other times they are very much unrelated to the areas now there are different famous personalities talking against and for these activities so if you are in the camp of ralph nader you would say that the company has great resources and you know when you have great power it comes with great responsibilities so such big companies like axel mobil same india ongc and other such big tata companies or reliance companies or maybe psus they have the resources and capabilities to transform india into a better country so why not do that plus they are taking different resources from the society itself and maybe they are polluting the society or maybe the environment in the process so why should they give something back to the society so this is a very nice thought but then milton friedman you must have heard his name he is he was a great economist he said that the business of business should just be business because if i am doing a business and in the way i am donating something to the organization then because i say i am i am making a temple okay now i won't be able to make that efficient use of money in making the temple as efficiently i do my operations so in a way i am destroying the wealth see i cannot do such responsibilities better than the professional temples so why should i do that and in the way if i am donating money to the society and doing different uh, activities uh, for the society because my law says it and in the process i become unprofitable and i myself become a uh, kind of a burden to the society as an organization and ultimately i have to fire some people how good are these activities so these are two different views about social responsibility but then our neutral view could be that organizations really can do a lot for the society because they are 
resource rich and they have the actual capabilities so what they could do is that they could plan such voluntary activities related to their own areas look at wipro wipro does it in the field of education it invests a lot and has different ngos investing in education now birla is into construction he it it, it builds very good temples and those temples are organized very well tata sons tata sons uh, trust is there in diverse areas really transforming india now in 2014 narendra modi from lal kila he invited companies to transform india and many companies they the, the corporate become one and they did a lot in making toilets at uh, maybe the backward areas or the villages of the society and it will definitely transform india social policy social policy means the contemplation of policy on social responsibility that gets well with the managerial philosophy at the highest level of the organization this is a very responsible job to frame such a policy a well thought of policy ensures that the resources invested by the company will create optimum value for the society and that the company will stick to its endeavor in long run look at the list of most admired companies for social responsibility by the fortune magazine like marriott international starbucks whole food markets royal dutch shell ch2m hill nike nestle walt disney statoil wendham worldwide it is a matter of research to know direction of causality in csr activities of a company and its brand value responsible organizations undertake large social projects and help transform the society we have already discussed the case of tata motors wherein tata motors educated and trained the people of nearby villages for its tata nano factory at sanans gujarat it helped the company improve its reputation and was able to get trained employees through local market political parties often educate general public on the power of votes and the voting process without soliciting them to vote for their political party this helps to increase their credibility it is very important to understand that corporate social responsibility should not be taken as a burden and it can be a source of competitive advantage for an organization so students to sum up i would say that ethics and corresponding ethical and unethical behaviors shape the future of an organization they are really strategic in deciding upon where the organization would go and these ethical behaviors and unethical behaviors are decided by the philosophy of the organization there in the mission vision and philosophical statements like values now it will always be there that people will behave unethically in certain situations they may have their own ex to cut but then we can guard our con- company by having frameworks for ensuring ethical behaviors in the organization by having better acquisition policies by having better say promotion policies by getting those people to become the brass of the company who have got better ethical standards so these all kind of efforts would make a company an ethical company and would make its brand image better and would ultimately make it successful then secondly i would say that social responsibility by the corporate world is an integral part of the transformation of any nation because the companies or the corporates have great resources with them and the capabilities they must take into consideration the society or maybe the community they are operating into and try to transform it but yes they should not do it on the cost of their own future a company cannot donate money in uh, definitely now what it should do is that it should look for strategic areas wherein it can provide social responsibility 
and it must help strategically the company to become socially acceptable admirable and to make it a better company in the future thank you